A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. <laughs> My name is Max Olwasike. This particular time we're speaking about state of athletics in the country with focus on the London Marathon set for tomorrow. Eliud Kipchoge looking forward to defend his title. He says that he's not going for a record title, but probably he will be crossing his fingers hoping <coughs> to retain the title he won last year at the same place. Of course, joining me are robust duo people form an integral part as far as athletics. A one-man discipline, a one-man sport is concerned. Barnabas Korir, Athletics Kenya branch chairman and a man who's been actively in matters athletics in the country at the other house and John Vaslin, a reputable athletics writer. Gentlemen, good to join me. Uh, good afternoon and Governor, how have you been? I'm very fine, uh, Maxwell. I think uh, it's good to be here. Good uh, to be here. It's been a while, but I'm happy to be here. Bye. Thanks for coming through. John Vaslin, man, last year or last 2017? Year, man. Last year, the last time I was here. How have you been out there? Ah, man? good, good, good. How is athletics? Athletics, good. It's everything, good. Everything ah, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. The, the office is good. Yeah, no wrangle so far, you see. So once we, the, 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 the bearers or custodians of anything are, there is a firm foundation, then things will flow, things will flow. But challenges are always there. And those challenges, we have to highlight them so that they get challenged, encouraged, and it's good that the office accepts those things, yeah. Mr. Korir, John Vaslin is speaking from journalistic <laughs> perspective, <laughs> but from a, an administrative angle, how are things at the other house? Wrangling is something of the past, now sanity has prevailed and the game is getting to another level. Yeah, I think uh, he's right. We, at the moment it's not uh, that bad, we are doing very well with the leadership of uh, General Dwey. I think everything has uh, been put in uh, the right position, right perspective. And uh, so far, uh, you have seen the results also of the performance of the athletes. And uh, of course, you can always char charge up a federation by the results of the activities. And I think ours speaks for itself. Speaks for it, uh, itself. The track record is encouraging, right? But we speak yeah. about the London Marathon set for tomorrow. John Vaslin, I know you are a writer. Uh, and uh, you must have read <coughs> several articles uh, previewing this championship mm. slated for tomorrow. It's a do or die contest. And of course, former world record holder Wilson mm. Kipsang uh, in male category is also looking forward to, you know, pull a surprise and if possible win or probably break a record title, something he did a few years ago. Mm. What do you make of the build up so far to the contest? But the build up is good and uh, it's encouraging. And it's uh, one of now the, the most talked sport in the world. And it has been put to, it's, it's, it's according to the ratings now, actually it's the most, apart from the Premier League, is the most weighted upon uh, 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 sport to be seen tomorrow. And it's going, it's promising fireworks. The weather is cool, uh, the environment so far is good, the build up also in London has been encouraging, more interview, more interaction, and more words, more war of words between the runners. Uh, I, still, uh, I still have a stand of Eliud carrying the day. <coughs> Eliud so far has not run in race. <laughs> so he's at his best. More has run a race. So you see, when we compare the two, and uh, I like the management of Eliud because it seems like they are, they, 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 they have the program for the runner, maybe it's three marathons in a year which are so good, that means it's this three, three, three months, or four months, four months, four months, which are good because the body has built up, the body is back to its normalcy, and even the energy and the mindset is clear. And you know Eliud, it's all about mind. The only thing he talks, he says about, it's about here. Everything, he doesn't depend on any, after training, he'll tell you everything is here. So I expect more to be seen. Fireworks tomorrow, it will be there. We cannot rule out uh, more fire. Mo Farah is there, and you have seen the British media how they have, they are doing everything possible <coughs> to put him everywhere. Every minute they are talking about Mo Farah, so there is a lot of positivity on his side. And then the beauty is that it's his home ground, home ground, and the following he has the following amazing following that is coming into place. Wilson Kipsang, Wilson Kipsang is the only man who has beaten this great enormous runner called Eliud Kipchoge. So he'll be also there, but when you see the last races or the four races that he has participated or competed against uh, Eliud, uh, his performance has been wanting and he's not as spa 
I like his kicks. When I look at the legs, how he runs, he's more of a next person. I don't know what happens after 20 kilometers. It's the time that he goes into... There are things that I really don't understand him. Mr. Corrida, I know you've dealt with these athletes even from a tender age to where they are. Most of them, uh, you've guided them, you've mentored them professionally and career-wise. And uh, going by the build-up, as John Vaslin puts it, the build-up is you know, enormous, it's tremendous, it's so huge, London is massive, British media hyping, they are very on Mo Farah, as usual, of course, they are very patriotic, <laughs> and like other press from other countries. What, what do you make of the redness of, you know, Kenyan participants ahead of the event tomorrow? Yes, I think uh, I, would, I would term this uh, event, uh, we use it uh, to call it the uh, Rumble in the jungle, <laughs> and um, honestly, um, the preparation has been uh, very good. Following up what uh, Eliud Kipchak has been doing, uh, Kipsang also has been training here in Nairobi, in Ningong, and I'm sure that also he wants to to prove himself, uh, despite the fact that uh, the last few races he has not done that well. When it comes to Mofara, uh, I understand that he was training in uh, Ethiopia, and uh, going by the past experience. You know, both of them are track athletes. Um, uh, Eliud Kipchoge and Mo Farah are track athletes, and they are exceptionally good. Both of them have good speed, and they have determination. Both of them, as Fasilina said, have the mind to fight. This game is actually the mind game. And uh, you have seen uh, the way uh, Eliud has already always been philosophical of what he talks about, and he believes in what he's doing. Uh, my take is that it is going to be a very tough game, uh, although my bet is that uh, Elliot will win, but then he will have to really get extra care to make sure that he beats Mofara. As for Kipsang, uh, the disadvantage he has is that um, he's not a track athlete. So if he manages to hang on with these guys until the last uh, one kilometer, definitely he's going to lose because uh, of the kick of Elliot mm -hmm. and uh, Mofara. But then, if he has the energy and he's in the shape that he was about a few years back, then of course he has to go away at uh, 38 kilometers so that he can leave these guys. But eventually, you know, London is a very tough course and uh, it is going to be really, really a tough one. But we don't have to forget that we have also Ethiopians who are going to be there mm. and they are also extremely good. So, this uh, competition this time around, it is a toss up. We cannot really be 100% sure that he is going to win. My pet is on Elliot because of the fact that he has a very tough mind that if he's there in the last one kilometer, the chances are he will win. There has been this assumption that mind games and psychological tricks are only in football, but athletics has also witnessed such scenarios. Going by uh, the headline uh, in midweek of athletics, this verbal warfare between Mofar and Haile Gabriel last year when he was hosted and was training in Ethiopia. Do you think that is also sort of mind game, vastly? Yeah, 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 it is. From more. It's, it's psychological torture. You are being tortured psychologically. And once there's an effect or you are affected here, then automatically you have a war, a mind war. So uh, the British media has really been trying to cover up that thing. They have played it so cool. They have engaged people. They have been talking to Mo, co the, the coach for Mo, who is the husband to Paula Radcliffe, the current world women record holder. And she, he has come out to explain the situation, how it was. And he said uh, Mo defended because there is a trainer that they, they were training in, 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 in Ethiopia. So this guy was coming to beat uh, the trainer. So Mo had to defend his fellow athlete. So he went and then he gave him a blow. And there's a lady who was coming up with these training gyms and so forth and so forth. So it's a torture they are trying to torture this man. But statistically, when you look, Mo has really grown as a person. And in athletics, uh, when in athletics, it's all about what Korea is take, talking about. When you come from the track and you have a proven record, written record, you have grown. You, your starch has grown, you are somebody people are talking about every day. That confidence that you have, it's, it's all about here. So for me, uh, is uh, on paper actually, when you see Mo, the best time for Mo is 2.5.49. He's the second last. The last, the, the, the last person is Daniel Wanjiru. He has 2.05.49. 
<laughs> so he's the last person on paper, he's second last. If you go on paper, statistically with the time, most time is last year, 2018, Chicago, uh, running Chicago Marathon when he won. So his time, if you compare, because we have four Ethiopians. We have Tola, Tamirat, Gabriel, who all are within the 204 bracket. So it's, it's a tough game. We cannot rule out these people, the Ethiopians. These people, they are called parasites in athletics because when you lift the leg, they place their leg where you have lifted it. So they are just playing psychological torture. You remember last time the rest, the, the person who was debuting, the Ethiopian who debuted with, with Eliud, he really tortured Eliud. Even there was a war as they were going on with the rest because Eliud was telling him, you keep your lane. But the man is not keeping his lane. <laughs> He's just behind Eliud. So torture is there again. And there are four good athletes, Ethiopians that are So this, 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 this race is going to be won. You know, in marathon, they say the marathon starts at 38 kilometers. <laughs> That's where the marathon starts. Forget about this journey. Forget about the journey from one kilometer, five, ten, fifteen, twenty one. Forget about that journey. That's eight kilometers, that's four kilometers eight. away. Yes, from that's the end. where the marathon starts. And I'm so sorry if Kip Sang will not have gone by that time. I'm sorry because the two people, Mo and Eliud, they'll beat him by a kick. Yeah. You think the targets uh <coughs> former record holder uh, uh Wilson Kip Sang has said is realistic one and considering that you know uh mr eliud kipchoge who is the reigning champion for london marathon has also hinted that he's not going for world record title do you think those particular targets are achievable um yes you know now eliud has tried uh, twice he tried for the to break the two hours he almost did that he went for the world record he did that he made it so this is a man who is uh, capable of anything. When they go now, because uh, you they probably don't even have pacemakers on this game, it means that uh, you really have to run not only with your legs, but with your mind, mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, you calculate. It's about calculating the energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to know uh, uh, what kind of energy remains for you so that you can run the last uh, uh, four kilometers after 38. You know, the four kilometers that remains is the one that determines the breaks or makes you. And, um, and, and of course, um, with Eliud and uh, Mofara and the Ethiopians, uh, it is going to be very tough. So what they will do now is to figure out how they will run the last four kilometers or the last two kilometers, and that one will determine the, the person who is going to win. Uh, Kipsang uh, really needs to, uh, to be careful on how he is going to handle it. If they don't have pacemakers or the pacemakers is not following them, then the chances of beating the two will be very difficult. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I'm looking forward to this event. I want to see. <laughs> Everyone is looking like forward years. to it. Of yeah, course, yeah, it will yeah. be blistering yeah. show tomorrow at the London Marathon. Yeah. Women representation, as far as Kenyan is concerned, Elitic Vivian Cheriot up uh, for the title defense. Do you think so? Uh, Vivian has always been my favorite. She is also uh, a lady who has the mind to compete. And she's also very intelligent. Uh, and mainly people always think that uh, you can only run uh, with your legs. But it is mainly the mindset that determines whether you will win or not, despite uh, the shape you are in. Vivian has that capacity and the toughness of mind uh, to resist any uh, pace. And, uh, and, and she knows when to, when to, when to run. I uh, remember her first debut in uh, New York. Uh, actually, she hung in too much and she used um, the pace of others and then she paid the price later. Mm -hmm. But then the next marathon, she was very intelligent and she left everybody to go. Mm -hmm. And she just followed uh, Medicaid and, and eventually uh, sure. she, beat, uh, she beat them. So um, this should be her third major marathon and she has done well in the others. She's someone to look uh, up to and I will not be surprised if she wins. Still a lineup for Kenya in women category, Mary Keitani, Vivian Cheriot, the defending champion. Is Kenya bagging all the categories? In your own assessment, <coughs> objectively in my, speaking. In my own assessment, yes, ass assessment, sorry, uh, we, we are sure of a podium finish, Kenya podium finish. And I'll tell you why. For me, I, I, I know Vivian runs her own personal race. That's what she has. She learned through the very first race because she ran she ran someone's pace that she didn't she had not prepared for or or, 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 or trained for 
But when you see the last, especially the last marathon, she ran on her own and she eventually came victorious. But according to me, Keitani uh, learned her lesson well and she knows the people that she's going to, 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 to run with. And the pace that she will go with, I still think she, 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 she has something in mind that she wants to achieve. And you know, this one will be the fourth. Uh, she, she, she has won three times, so this one is going to be the fourth also, like Elliot. So, and uh, I'm, I'm putting my prize money on her. Uh, and I know she, she is going to perform, because she has done it before. She's the current uh, holder with 217. So I know she will do it something. But there are two people here that we should not forget. Leave alone uh, 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 Vivian and, 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 and Keitani. And Keitani. There is somebody called Cherono, and there is somebody called Gladys. Gladys Cherono, mm -hmm. and then there is Bridget. There is Gladys and Bridget. When you look at these two women, their personal best actually is 218. 218. Even Vivian Cherono, 218. And when you look at 2018, when it was going to end, look at the performance of this girl called Bridget, because gay. Then you realize that something is going to happen. And these are the people that we need to really focus on right now. Because for me, my fear is she might beat the two. Because these two, their mindset is Vivian and Keitani. They know they are going to fight each other. But they have forgotten these they two know they people. Are the favorites. Yeah, they are the favorites. Even statistically, they are being favored. But I'm telling you, somebody to watch in that women marathon is called Bridget. Watch her. She might carry the day. Away from London Marathon, we're going to speak about other headlines as far as athletics is concerned locally. The junior team that represented the country that did duty for Kenya at the under 18 and under 20 African Youth Championship in Ivory Coast, of course, have stayed a seat in of unpaid allowances. You spoke, and even the athletes upon their arrival spoke. Let's listen in before we proceed. Gold and silver. 1500 meters so we cooperated with my fellow colleague uh, I was strong than him Kidogo so it will be to pick a sub moja mbili na tulioza nilete gold medal na pia kalete silver Shukuru Mungu sana je performance yangu sijai kimbia ile kama hiyo and then I'll define any body a lot of improvement. It's actually emotional when you see what they require as girls and the CS was told. So when it comes to that now, we cannot be so rigid to the extent that they cannot be be paid, but it can be done legally through the ministry. They don't have to pay AK. They let them come and pay the athletes directly here. They are here. Each athlete can sign on their on, 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 on their own behalf and collect the money. But if we say now they have to be paid through the account, which accounts now because they don't have accounts. The parents don't have accounts. And the ministry says we cannot pay to, to someone else other than the parents. So what do we do? Are they going to be paid or are they not going to be paid? We have to be realistic in what we do and we have to really understand the artists themselves. And Edward Zakai, of course, speaking upon their arrival from Ivory Coast where they're participating in under 18 and under 20 African Youth Championship, of course, Good performance, spectacular show from the Kenyan lads. And of course, Barnabas Korir also spoke with regards to the unpaid allowances. Where is the conflict between the government and Athletics Kenya in terms of payment of athletes' dues? Uh, as far as Athletics Kenya is concerned, you know, we are the body who is responsible for development and nurturing of the talent. We have seen as Kenyans the results that we have already achieved. We know. All of us know that uh, we don't get any support from the government to nudge the talent. We have all the programs that uh, Athletes Kenya rolls out for the preparation of competitions for the whole year. And we do it with the support of the sponsors and other well-wishers. We don't get a penny from the government. The only time that we ask the money from the government is when the team has already been selected and it is a Team Kenya. It is not Team AK. It's a Team Kenya. And that's the responsibility of the Kenyan government to ensure that when they are selling the team, for African Championship, for World Championship, for Olympics, then they should be ready to pay that little amount which are comprises of the tickets and allowances. And that is the, the problem that has been uh, uh, persisting for a long time. You have seen also in other federations that um, they have issues when it comes to the tickets. They don't plan 
very well so that our teams or our athletes or our players they end up in their boots they sleep on the floor of their boots because of the poor planning we don't have any conflict with the government but the problem i can foresee as i've always done is that some government officials don't even understand anything about sports they don't understand specifically even athletics how it functions and when we were in uh, Ivory Coast with the team, the, the CS, the new CS, uh, um, Amina Mohammed came, and I found that she's a lady who actually can uh, uh, help change uh, the structure and the attitude of the sports ministry. In my opinion, I have seen for many years that I've been working with AK. Uh, yes, people have been talking about federations not doing their elections, Federations not eating the money, but then when you really understand the whole thing, the problem is the Ministry of Sports. They don't have strikers and they don't understand what is going on. The problem of unpaid allowances to the athletes, the sportsmen, has been, you know, a rampant dragon uh, for the last few years. And even going forward, in case it's not addressed, it will remain to be a crisis that is supposed to be addressed. Even during World Under 18 Championship, Rio Olympics, the same scenario was witnessed. Do you think it's high time the government of Kenya, the Home Minister of Sports, can remunerate the participants prior to the competition? So that I, it's something of the past. I think it will be, in my own <laughs> opinion, it will be good if they can do that because uh, when you look at the team, team that uh, Athletics Kenya, and I'm not here to vouch for, for them, uh, the team that they, they, when they set up the team, <coughs> or a team is going under the name of Athletics Kenya, you will never hear of these issues of allowances. They are paid prior even before leaving. There was a certain time that it was not paid, but they were paid, I think, in the middle of the night. <laughs> money, money, money has issues. Everyone has his own, uh, every house has his own problem and challenges. But uh, if, if, if you are to ask me to, uh, to, 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 to evaluate this, the government needs to pull up its socks. Because from 2017, you can imagine Maxwell, when you were covering the youth <laughs> and yes. the 18 youth, till now, these guys have not been paid their money. Something must, must be wrong. And then the you find... The athletes or the contractors? The, 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 the government. The, the machinery of the government. There's something that is fishy. Because when you look at... There's uh, another federation. I don't know if it's boxing federation. That you hear, even their budget, they have been already paid everything. But when you look at the other federations, there is an issue of, of getting that money. And when you go to intrigues of how that payment was, oh, so there is a sister who works at the federation to this chairman of... So or the, I don't know. what you are trying to say, there is no same level playing ground in terms of treatment of this federation? Yes, yes, yes. I think there is something fishy that we are not being told. But I think with, uh, with Amina being at the helm, le let's hope. Because, she, uh, you know, a mother will always be a mother. And uh, Amina has children uh, who are grown up their past 20 years. So I think he needs now to, to come in as a mom to these young people because this is torture they are doing to them. If Zakar has not been paid since 2017, Manangoy has not been paid since 2017, will you, will, will, will you, he, he might even change citizenship because of <laughs> such, because money is coming. These people are calling good money for sign up contracts they are good outside there so why should you stay here where you're not even being you know a munaitwa they were called by you know i was so embarrassed that the vice president called them he took them to his residence and he promised that these people will be paid in one week in two weeks time those were his own ones two weeks time we will have cleared this today they have not been paid we don't want politics in athletics athletics is not of politics athletics where somebody is sweating you know let me tell you one thing i'll give you a scenario of a marathon you go to that person or let me give you a scenario this scenario if a marathon gets lost let me tell you at around 40 kilometer or you stop that person from running at 40 kilometer immediately he will stop his body he's completely finished he cannot pick up anything he's done completely done when you go to that person, you remove. Because for us, people who cover athletics, we interact, we know how they suffer, what they go through. When you go to remove that shoe, just go here at cross-country championship after finishing. Go help that runner to remove that, <coughs> just that shoe. You'll find how painful it is. When a marathoner removes his running shoe, all those nails are not there. It's red blood. This is something I'm telling you that I've experienced personally. And he has been a runner, he knows that. And so he's, he's, that's why we want people who have run. Yes, he seems to be in agreement. Because for me, I'm not here to campaign for Corinne. 
I have had issues with Korea, and I usually tell him and air them. But the thing is, in, we need such characters in office because one, he has been a runner. He knows where it pitches most. Two, he's learned. He has gone to school. So to run such an entity, it will be of beneficial to the community, to the country, and even individuals that are running. Through. So if you can get hold of money, of a runner's money, somebody who has you are not doing him any, any, favor. any favor, you are destroying his life. Because with running, let me tell you, when you get an injury <laughs> or something, your leg happens to something, your case is gone. So we need to encourage. Governor, as you wind up, do you think yeah. these are the situations that contribute to, you know, change of nationalities? Because I know athletics is a team that has dominated headlines as far as Kenya is concerned, and Kenyan athletes have done spectacularly well overseas, and they have attracted interest from other countries who want them to change citizenship. Delays in terms of unpaid allowances, salaries, and dues can can uh, contribute to, you know, running away from Kenya. <laughs> You know, this is, uh, this is something very sensitive. When they staged the city in, uh, two days ago, these yes. boys, I went there to talk to them. After meeting the, the CS, I asked her, the, what can I tell them? And of course, she gave me the, what she was, uh, wanted me to explain to the athletes. But when I went there, you cannot even imagine or believe that uh, the same artists like Zakayo, uh, Manangoi, yes. they were talking exactly what you were saying that they have no even business to run for this country anymore because of what has happened. They talked about that. They say if they get a chance, they don't want to run for Kenya. Mm. But, you know, that aside, uh, I think the attitude of the Ministry of Sports must change. And I realized also for the first time that we have not spoken enough to fight for the rights of our athletes. I realized that actually we have been fighting, going round and round over issues, maybe election issues, and leaving out the most important issue, and that is the needs of our athletes. He explained very clearly. I was an athlete myself. I ran the marathon. And luckily, when I, my first marathon, when I competed, um, at 35 kilometers, I was running with the guys from Ethiopia and uh, uh, Tanzania. When I looked down on my foot, it was all blood. So I kept on looking at it, saying, will I really finish? It was complete blood. The shoe was blood. Luckily, my son was in the car with the mother because they were watching, and they kept on encouraging me. I went on to win that marathon, but then, they had to come and remove the shoe for me because it was total blood and I could not walk. You can imagine what he says. And if you go back now to the athletes, what they go through, is some of them, they sell their land, they sell their chicken, everything to buy the shoes. We don't have enough funds to assist them, the young ones, to grow. We don't have any money to give them. The government does not give us any money to support them. So when they have come all the way to make the team for the Republic of this country, of Kenya, so that they can represent Kenya, and so that we can be proud and talk about them. Then why is it so difficult to pay them the spinach allowances? If you see the amount of money these boys were and girls were being given, it's only $500, mm. having stayed for that long. Others were saying they have to go to school on Monday, and this is what they are depending. They are, their parents, they don't have anything. Their guardians, they don't have anything. When they even came here to get the passports because they was paying for them, we had to get the money to go back home. When you go to the ministry post, that's where I've been sitting and looking for following these things. You talk to these guys, they have no clue and they don't have that empathy. They don't have that feeling that these people should be taken care of. They think it's just when they see an athlete like Kipchoge now, winning London mm. Marathon, they think every athlete is like that. Mm. Yet he has worked yes. for it. And you know, they don't know the history of Kipchoge from 2002 mm. now, up to now. So not everybody earns money the way other major marathons are earning. What I want to say is that um, I have a feeling that the new CS, like he says as a mother, she's going to make a change. But my proposal, which I'm going to pursue, is that if the ministry is going to continue doing what they are doing, then they have no business in dealing with the federations. The allowances and the money that has to be used to develop sports in this country should go to the fund, mm -hmm. and the fund can control. When we give our projects now, our budgets, six months, then we can work out until the time now they have to pay, then they have approved and the fund pays us. Let the ministry deal with policy and other issues. But when it comes to allowance, mm -hmm. they should actually stop it completely and we go to the fund, we get the money directly and we face our programs, at least Kenya, football, all those, so that we don't continue blaming the federation that they are eating money. They have, most of them, they have um, briefcase um, offices. <laughs> but then when you ask the, 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 the government, what have you given to say, yes, we gave you this and you didn't open an office. We gave you this and you didn't develop this. So you are thinking now about maybe Nepal or whatever. They don't have enough 
capacity mm -hmm. to develop because they don't have the seed money. Now, who is going to sponsor them? Because the sponsors, they also want to make money. They want to grow also. They are not yes. going to sponsor somebody who is not. And they want value, yes, for, their and they want value for their money. How can you say you are supporting them and they are misusing the money when they don't have that kind of money? So the problem, I can tell you, is not even with the Federation. Our major problem is the sports ministry that needs to be completely restructured so that we can develop. Otherwise, we will never develop. You can take it from me. Fair enough. Uh, finally, uh, John Vaslin, your last submissions on the doping menace. As we speak right now, a man who was also supposed to represent Kenya at tomorrow's London Marathon has you know, failed at drug <coughs> tests, testing positive for consumption of banned substances. That is Abraham Putum. Big blow for Kenya? Oh, it's a big one with suspicion. How big? Ah, it's so huge. You know, that's a platform, and these are the gimmicks of, 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 of Wazungu. <laughs> they know how to play around. That's a psychological torture on Kenyan runners who are going to participate tomorrow because everyone there, the runners or the TVs will be talking the about will doping. Be on yes, uh, doping issues. This has failed doping and doping. Funny enough, something that I've just learned this morning is that this man knew even before he traveled to London, he had gotten the finding and been sent to him. Yeah, about the, the, the athlete blood nini and 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 they took him there and even took the flight to to to, to london what a shame you know he could have declined to take the flight to london because the results had been sent to him already a letter had been sent to him from aiu who are responsible on that so this one is just shaming the country and now they are going to ride on that but again the issue is this now. The custodians of these runners is AK and is here. I think I don't know what AK is going to do so that these people, I think they should propose a bill or second a bill that once you dope, it's criminalized. So that, in fact, I know he landed yesterday because he was, he, he, he was immediately taken to the flight this morning or this morning. Okay. In fact, such characters need, when you land, you're in chains, straight away to police. Because it's a criminal offense. You are shaming the whole country. Because tomorrow Sunday, it's tomorrow at 11, people will be watching. The whole world is going to be watching uh, Kenyan. And you will hear those commentators, mark you me. You will hear <laughs> them saying, yeah, yesterday uh, one half <laughs> marathon record holder, Abraham Kiptoum, was sent home for doping purposes. It's shame. To be to hear such a thing, I think athletics Kenya they need to put their house in order. They need again to go back to the drawing board and see what can we do. Because if it's education, let me tell you. Recently, we had a conference, a very huge one, in a big. And I conducted it. AK. AK. Instead of awarding yeah. the athletics, they took all the money they and facilitated. They paid flights because I had a, a sneak preview of, of the program and how it was happening. They paid flights for others from Eldoret because they didn't want to come even. Now AK had to pombeleza people. Hey, we will pay you the flight. Just come up here for one day, then you can go back to your training. You see, they gave allowances to these people. They put them at the best places they can. Everyone from that person who is not known to the person who is not known. So at least there is a role that AK is, pay, is, is playing. So it's upon these athletes now to see and get something out of such investment that these people put. But again, Athletics Kenya, you need to come up with a bill, you take it to the relevant authorities so that we criminalize this act because uh, there, there were doses, AIU, the whole house, all the exact, Bamat, he's called Bamat, the in charge, he was here in Kenya on the same, same issues of, of doping. So we need to now just change the tact that we criminalize so that these people can put in jail. So that was why Rudi Abitukai is. From management level, is it a character as a nation to the country? Has it injured the reputation of Kenya considering it's well known <coughs> country for athletics as uh, an individual sporting discipline? And uh, now that IAAF has suspended Abraham Kiptum uh, provisionally, <laughs> Uh, and now you wouldn't be eligible to participate in tomorrow's London Marathon. What are the le relevant stakeholders doing, apart from workshop and training, AK in partnership with even ADAC to continue sensitize the athletes on the need of, you know, not involving themselves in doping? You know, this thing is also very, very interesting because, um, you know, the, the issue of uh, biological passport for Abraham Kiptum came, uh, yes. came about a month ago. And the information was given to him and also the, the manager that uh, the, this adverse uh, uh, results for biological passport and uh, they were still investigating it. Two days ago, as I left Kenya, because we saw that he was in London, yes. we wrote to AIU.
to find out uh, whether uh, this gentleman uh, can actually run in London because he was already has already been at firstly mentioned and why he was in London. You will be shocked that we received the information yesterday that confirmation that AIU is saying he can actually run in London. When we have the documentation to prove that they say that he can run in London. Twenty four hours later they said no, he has actually been professionally suspended. So it goes back to what Fisley is saying that this whole thing is it smells of uh, an intention to, um, to put the country in bad light. Because when it comes to London, you know that competition is watched worldwide and everybody is there. They'll now be talking about Abraham Kiptum, but not about Kiptum and the others. Or whatever they are commenting, they say, yes, one of them has already been sent home. Mm. You know, yes, the diversionary mm. tactics. And then you know that this boy also had broken the world record in the... Uh, 21k. Yes. And that has been there for a long time. Mm. So it is a very sad yes. day for us. Mm. But as he says, we need to change how we are going to handle the issue of doping in the country. We have to be more severe in the punishment. Uh, when we had uh, AGM, uh, annual general meeting, with all the stakeholders in the country, take him, and we passed a resolution that any athlete that has has been sanctioned, has been as this a positive sanction and coming out after the sanction is not going to be allowed to compete for the country anymore. It is done. We will not, even if they do, even like uh, the guy who was winning somewhere yesterday, he's not going to represent this country again. Mm -hmm. Anyone who has sanctioned will never wear the Kenyan chassis. That is one of the rules now. But we need to go to parliament to make sure that there's a law so that these people, uh, are, when, they, when they test positive, then we have evidence and we jail them. That is the only way we can do. But you see, the ADAC resolution that was done, the rules and regulations that was given, was that they had, we had already pa adopted a law that says that if you are found guilty, then you will be you will go in for three years or pay three million. But then it is the IWF that actually say that you cannot jail the mm. athletes, but you have to follow the process of IWF. Mm. Same thing with the Ethiopia when the Gabriel uh, Salasia say that they are going to jail these people and uh, again the IWF say no, you can't do that. Mm. So we are in a catch twenty two and we don't know what to do. But then because we, of the because fear of, of the fear. ban, because yes. of government involvement. But you see now we have to do other things, extraordinary things, to prove that we are doing something against this. And we have to to, to get our own laws so that we can we don't have to worry about the uh, IWF. But we say, okay, you, you will go in when you are found. If you are working for the KDF or the police or any government, you will have to be fired, you lose everything, and you lose even the the, jo uh, the money you have uh, received from this. Because at the end of the day, we are destroying this uh, athletics, which has been special for this country. We cannot continue allowing that. And something has to give in so that we can change this. And we must change. I think I forgot Quality something before you just finished up. Just a few seconds. Just a few seconds. I think AK has the power because the manager was given the letter advanced letter against Kip Tum. A K should hold a accountable, the manager. He should be suspended or taken to jail. Two, last year, uh, I heard Fununu. You know, we do research as writers <laughs> that uh, Rosa, which has been adversely mentioned yes. in this uh, 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 doping, doping issue, scandal. doping issues. Uh, they were to be suspended. This year they were not supposed to be there. But this year they are operating. I think uh, Athletics Kenya need to suspend such people. They need to get hold of this manager so that he's liable for what has happened. Because now it's not about the manager of the athlete. It's about the country tomorrow. I agree with him. Just give us two days and you will see the action. You will crack the whip. You will see it for yourself. Fantastic conversation. It's been on the state of athletics with focus on London Marathon set for tomorrow and Kenyan marathoners, both male and female categories. Of course, they are the defending champions. Eliud Kipchoge for male category and Vivian Chariot for female category. Looking forward to retain their titles. Of course, we will be keenly watching the proceedings of that particular event tomorrow to see how it pans out and keep informed. Always a pleasure having you on board a formidable pair as far as athletics is concerned. Barnabas, Correa. Athletics Kenya branch chairman and John Vaslin Athletics writer joining us to put things in perspective as far as matters athletics is concerned. Always a pleasure having you, Governor, and thank pleasure. you for coming through. Fantastic pleasure. Treat it's been. Yeah. John, cheers, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Touchline is the show, and this is Y254. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Match is coming up next.